Good day everyone, this is Professor Friday coming at you one more time. Today we're going to be talking about the technique of reduction of order as it applies to differential equations. So, technique is referred to as reduction of order. The idea is, if you've been given a second order homogeneous differential equation with one of the solutions, the technique of reduction of order will allow you to figure out a second linearly independent solution. We know that for a homogeneous second order linear differential equation, the solution space should be a two-dimensional vector space, meaning that there should be two linearly independent solutions. So if we have one, the technique of reduction of order will help us get the second. Now the process is as follows. In order to get a linearly independent solution, we need to assume that the second solution is a nonlinear combination of the first one. That should definitely say y1. I don't know where x1 came from. x1 isn't even in here. So we're assuming that u1 is some function of x. Then we're going to take two derivatives, and you'll note that we will need to make use of the product rule, given that u1 is a function of x and y1 is a function of x as well. What we're going to do is take those two derivatives, as well as the original function, and plug it into the given differential equation. What we should see is that any term that contains just a u1, no u1 primes, no u1 double primes, anything with just a u1, should cancel out, given that y1 was a solution of the homogeneous differential equation. We'll see that momentarily. Next, we're going to substitute v is equal to u1 prime. What this does is quite literally what the technique is called. It reduces this from a second order differential equation to a first order differential equation in terms of v. Again, we'll demonstrate that shortly. The resulting first order differential equation is a differential equation in v. It's also guaranteed that because the original equation was homogeneous, then we're going to see either a separable differential equation or a first order linear differential equation. Both of those should be a piece of cake to solve. So the constant of integration is not needed in here, and we'll describe why as we're working through the process. Then we're going to substitute back and say that v is equal to u1 prime. And finally, <clears throat> we'll be able to integrate u1 prime to arrive at u1. Now, once we arrive at u1, we can get the second linearly independent solution, which will be y2 is equal to u1 times y1. Then the solution of your homogeneous differential equation would be y1 is a linear comb or excuse me, y is a linear combination of y1 and y2. And by linear combination, I mean that c1 and c2 represent constants now instead of functions of x. So, the problem that I would like us to try this process out with is the following y double prime plus 8y prime plus 16y is equal to 0, and we've been given that the uh, first linearly independent solution is x times e to the negative 4x. Now if you'd like to verify this for yourself, go ahead and pause the video and uh, take a couple derivatives of x times e to the negative 4x, plug them in here, and we'll see good things happen. So according to our process that we just had written down, our first assumption that we make is that we assume that the second solution is going to be some function times our first solution. Now we are going to have to take two derivatives of this so this is going to require use of the product rule. So this is first times derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. We'll need to make use of the product rule once again. So this will be u1 times first times derivative of the second will be negative 4x times e to the negative 4x uh, plus the second times the derivative of the first. That'll be e to the negative 4x times 1 plus x times e to the negative 4x times u1 prime. All right. This is now ready for us to differentiate again because it's going to require more extensive use of the product rule. We'll start a little further to the left. So this will be, once again, first times derivative of the second. Oh boy, negative 4x times e to the negative 4x plus e to the negative 4x. Uh, plus the second times the derivative of the first. u1 prime. Uh, then we need to make use of the product rule on this. The good news is when we differentiate x times e to the negative 4x, we actually just did that up here. 
So I'm going to make use of that as a shortcut. So this will be first times derivative of the second u1 double prime plus second times derivative of the first. And here's where we're going to shortcut that at the next step. Negative 4x. Good. So this will be u1 times, oh boy, this is a big derivative. Uh, let's see. First times derivative of the second will give 16x e to the negative 4x. Second times derivative of the first minus 4 e to the negative 4x. Uh, and then derivative of this with the chain rule, negative 4 e to the negative 4x. Plus negative 4x e to the negative 4x plus e to the negative 4x times u1 prime. Plus x times e to the negative 4x times u1 double prime plus, uh, this is where we're going to make use of that shortcut. We already took the derivative of this. It was negative 4x e to the negative 4x plus e to the negative 4x. Is that everything? I think that was everything. Uh, one observation that we can make is that these two terms with the u1 prime are exactly the same. We also have a couple of like terms up here with the u1 term, so let's go ahead and combine some like terms. We'll call this u1 times 16x e to the negative 4x minus 8 e to the negative 4x plus, since there are two of these, I'm going to double everything inside the parentheses. So we'll do negative 8x e to the negative 4x plus e to the, oh, 2 e to the negative 4x, like I said, doubling everything in there. And then the u1 double prime term is x times e to the negative 4x times u1 double prime. All right, so now that we've taken two derivatives of this beastly thing, now we can go ahead and uh, plug it into the original homogeneous differential equation. So our differential equation was y double prime plus 8y prime plus 16y is equal to 0. Now this might be a little bit fun to write out. This entire expression was u2, or excuse me, y2 double prime. So double prime will be 16x e to the negative 4x minus 8 e to the negative 4x times u1 plus negative 8x e to the negative 4x plus 2 e to the negative 4x times u1 prime plus x e to the 4x u1 double prime plus 8 times y prime y prime was all the way back up here, and this is the expression that I'm going to plug in. So this will be u1 times negative 4x times e to the negative 4x plus e to the negative 4x plus x times e to the negative 4x times u1 prime plus 16 times y, that is the original function, u1 times x times e to the negative 4x. Allegedly, this whole thing is going to be equal to 0. Holy crap. What I'd like to do is just a couple of things that are going to make this process entirely easier. I notice that every single term that is on the right-hand side contains an e to the negative 4x. No harm will come from multiplying both sides by e to the 4x, so I think I'm going to do that thing. So what we will get after we do that is 16x minus 8 u1. Oh my gosh, I already hate this problem so much less. Plus negative 8x plus 2 u1 prime plus x times u1 double prime. In addition to multiplying by e to the 4x, I'm also going to distribute this 8 through. So we'll see plus u1 times, this will be 8 times negative 4x, so negative 32x, and then an 8 times e to the negative 4x, so that'll be plus 8. Distributing the 8 and multiplying by the e to the 4x, this will be plus 8x u1 prime, 
And then we have a plus, oh boy, I'm not sure you can even see that now. Uh, oh, 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 yep, yeah, there we go. Plus this last term, it'll be 16x u1. And again, this is all equal to zero. That was um, that was more fun than I was prepared to have with my day off. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, take a moment and see if I can identify maybe some like terms that we can get rid of around here. Now, allegedly, as part of this process, all of the U1 terms should cancel out. So I'm going to start underlining all of the U1 terms. We'll do anything with an X as a double underline and anything with a constant term as a single underline. So as far as the double underlines are concerned, I see a 16x plus 16x minus 32x. Those cancel. For the constant terms, over here I see a minus 8. Over here I see a plus 8. Everything will cancel. Dios mio. That feels good. Well, let's see what else we can do here. I also see that we have a minus 8x u1 prime plus 8x u1 prime, so this term and this term, those are going to cancel out as well. Just call me butter, we are on a roll. What I'm going to do at this point is see if I can recopy this onto the next page with some stuff now cancelled out. Feels good. Feels real good. All right, so let's see, what didn't cancel? We have a 2u1 prime. We have an x u1 double prime. Cancel, 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 cancel. Oh, wow, that, uh, that's real nice. This right here is our resulting equation. You'll notice that the u1s did, in fact, all cancel out. Feels good. And uh, everything else is kind of in place. Now, at this point, this is where we're going to employ the reduction of order. What we're going to do is let v be equal to u1 prime. Because all of the u1 terms canceled out completely, this is going to work out just fine. Because then we can say that v prime is equal to u1 double prime. So I can express this as 2 times v plus x times dv dx is equal to 0. At this point, you have options. This is either guaranteed to be a separable or a first order linear differential equation. First order linear differential equation requires use of an integrating factor and a lot of students find that unsavory. So what I'm going to do is treat it as a separable differential equation. I'm going to do so by subtracting 2v from both sides. Then we will divide both sides by x, multiply by dx, and divide by v giving us the following. This is now dv over v is equal to negative 2 over x dx. That is an equation that is just begging to be integrated. Left hand side we have the natural log of v. Right hand side we have negative 2 times the natural log of x. Normally we would also see a plus c, but a constant of integration is not necessary. So what we can do with it at this point is apply the rule for logarithms that says we can put that negative 2 up into the exponent and say now that v is equal to x to the negative 2 power by exponentiating both sides. However, this all came about from this substitution up here. Now that we've solved for v, we can substitute back and call it u1 prime. That's x to the negative 2 power. And once again, the only thing that's really necessary for us to do at this point is to integrate both sides with respect to x. Making use of the power rule, this will give us u1 is equal to negative x to the minus 1. Now that negative is simply a constant multiple, so if you prefer, we'll call this negative 1 over x. This gives us access to our second linearly independent solution. To put this back into context, from the first page, we operated under the assumption that y2 was equal to u1 times x times e to the negative 4x. Now we have what that is. u1 times x times e to the negative 4x is now negative 1 over x times x times e to the negative 4x, better known as simply 
e to the negative 4x. Your general solution will be a linear combination of y1 and y2. So general solution, y is equal to c1y1 plus c2y2. That'll be a linear combination of x e to the negative 4x and e to the negative 4x. I hope that you found this tutorial useful. Please feel free to go back, rewind, and repeat anything you need to see again. As always, questions are encouraged. I'll see you next time.